Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, then, because I got. Okay. Can y'all see me? Yeah. Can y'all hear me? We can hear you. We can't see your screen share. Uh oh. Okay. Should be screen share. Let's see. So screen share. And how about there? You go. Yeah. Okay. There. Right there. You're good. All right. Okay. <laughs> Okay. It's still good. Jokaya Dega, Jane. It's still good. Jokaya Dega. Chinda. Amy. It's still good. Good. Okay. <laughs> now, but I'm talking to Christy, Amy, and Jane. Is Tongon Jokaya Dega Ga? Is Tongon Kohaya a take 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 a a a means more than one, okay? So I was talking to all three of you, so I would say, <coughs> So, okay, today, as soon as I get through here, I'm gonna run back. This morning we did a, uh, we're doing an immersion camp for adults, for adults. And we just had 10, we just got 10. We just was gonna take 10 due to the fact that we just, this kind of like a pilot. Uh, thing for us and so uh, and you know we was uh, there's 10 of them in there and we we're doing sounds we're doing different clans we're doing different things to games to teach the students and this one woman told me this one girl was in there she goes I've heard language speakers all around me I've heard it I've done it and uh, she said uh, they were speakers around me she said but I got a better perspective after I learn that language is sounds today, she said, now I know they're sounds. And she said, I never knew that, that language is sounds. So she said, I'm gone. Now I got a better perspective and I'm, I'm starting to, she said, just from what I was speaking, she said, I heard those sounds. And she said, it is sounds. It is sound. So right here, is tongun jokhaya de ga ga. See, those are sounds. So language is sounds. Those are all in your sound paper. Okay. Right here, components of language. This is what I go by, guys. And for you, some of you that's just joining, this is our missed out. The main component of the Muscogee tribe is language, and that's true. They're the found, we wouldn't be a tribe unless we have something to identify us as a tribe. And that's the uh, language. So the main component, Mus Muscogee. Look here now, these are all broken down into sounds. And this is what we're saying, what we communicate with sounds. Muscogee, Obonaga, Muscogee, We don't have component the uh we don't have an um the creek word for muskogee word to say component so we say in huitha in huitha means that's the uh it stands on that the language the tribe stands on the language that's what it means right there because we don't have component so we have to say muskogee or monaga Muskogee in Huithados. The main component of the Muskogee tribe is language. So you got Muskogee and Bunaga is language. Muskogee is the Muskogee tribe. In Huitha. That's where the component come in. We don't have a word for component, so we have to say what it stands on. What it stands on. Okay. 
Make language a habit, make language natural. Bonaga imunga hayet. Make it, bonaga is language. Imunga means like uh, natural. Hayet, make it. That's where, um, this was pretty easy, but we don't have a word for habit, but we say imunga. Like if uh, there used to be this man that his, uh, he would, uh, he had he had a handicap, you know. He was handicapped, but he limped. So they said that's natural for him, and they would say imungados. They were saying it's natural. See si, imungados. They were saying it was natural. Um, except language, bonaga inhonted, and that actually bonaga is language inhonted means believe in it because we have to accept it one way or the other. So we have to use believe because we don't have a word for acceptance. So we have to say we believe in it. So bonaga in haunted. In haunted means belief. On the identity, language think it's me. That's the transfer. Bonaga andos gomet. On the identity. You're saying right here, going back up, you're saying the language is you. Bonaga an means like me. Dos gomet. Think it's you. Language, think it's me. So see, you're saying that it's you. It, that, it's you. The language is you. Make it yours. Mojanita. Inagijit. Inagijit. Inagijit means to make it yours. Own it. Today, make it yours. Own. Own the present. Mojanita is present today. Inagijit means make it yours. Own it. Okay, carry the future. Nitta ojin, nitta ojahanat, ganothe. Carry it. We don't say. Uh, we we can say ishit, but that's you can't use it because we have to say ganothe means ganothe is carrying it on your back. So anytime you're carrying something, you're you're carrying it. But we can't say two hands, so we're saying nitta ojahanat ganothe. Honor the past. Hufunangi atakwijit. I forgot that on there, but I can. Hufunangi. Hufunangi means long time ago. Atakwijit. Okay, so you would spell that. V R A K Q U E, I mean K U E. C E T. A thought means uh to uh value it, value it or honor it. So it's hofunangi a thought honor the past. So this is how, and you know, there's some words we don't have in the Muscogee language, so we have to uh, uh make get the words that means the same. Speak bravely. Fik hamgit onayas. Fik hamgit means uh, we don't have bravely. So fik hamgit is figi. Make it brave. Make your heart brave. Fik hamgit onayas. So that's how, uh, that's speak bravely. We don't have some of these words like bravely. So we call it fik hamgit. Okay. Forms of greeting. Whoa. Oh, okay. Here we go. Phrases for hot weather. Remember now, tones has a lot to do with this. Remember tones. Mojanita, ligoti dos. Ligoti is warm, and that can be for anything. Warm weather, warm air, warm water, warm food. You just have to put ligoti to something like uh, warm water. You do like warm coffee. Too. Warm coffee, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Warm coffee. Coffee, ligoti. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, ligoti. Mm -hmm. And if you say it is warm, you just got to add that dos. Oh, well, ligoti dos. Coffee, ligoti dos. 
Home beta ligot hidos. See, you can use that just for anything that you want to add warm to. It's boiling today. We got a word for boiling, but that's not what it means on here. It means when you say this is like a parable, it means it's hot. It's boiling today. So you would put a tone to this and put that emphasis. Mm -hmm. Hear that tone? Because hey is just a word. But when you put hey, that means it is boiling out there. <laughs> it is hot. So remember that tone has everything to do with uh, language, and that's what we're going to we're doing now. Uh, so uh, this is what uh, I need to teach: is the tones changes the way it sounds, uh, or can change the meaning. If you just say "mojanita heidos," now listen, "mojanita heidos," you're saying it's hot. But if I say, hey, yeah, what does that mean? It is so, it's burning up out there, or boiling out there. Okay, the sun is strong today. And what they mean by strong is like, uh, it's shining really, it's beating down. And you can say, or you can say, it's really beaten down. See how that tone changes that. The tones has a lot to do with language and so and situation environment. The ground is dry. Igana gaspidos. Igana's ground gaspis dry. And he is dos. We need rain. Uski boyajitos. Rain we need. See how that's written? It's rain we need. It starts fires when it's dry. Guthby no mat. Guthby means it's dry. No mat when it is. Okay, we wildfire. You know, fire is turka. But when we say wildfires, we say, we say, hobotki, hobotki. So my my cousin in Spokane's been well. He's in the uh, yeah Spokane. He's going through that, and he said it rained the other day and kind of gave them a break. But they were ready to they were ready to evacuate, and he's evacuated before and it's burned him down before. The fire has burned him down. So um, you know Mother Nature. We follow Mother Nature a lot. We study it, and. Uh, since we're talking about weather, I'm gonna share something with you. Like, you know, my uh, uh, our our my grandmother predicted weather by what she saw. Mm -hmm. You know, and when it's real hot, and I don't know if y'all used y'all ever saw it, the clouds look like it'd been um, plowed. The clouds look like it. She used to say that the rabbit did that. She used to say, chuf it, chuf, uh, 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 she used to say, she looked like a rabbit plowed, and it would be real hot that day. Mm -hmm. But the clouds looked like they were plowed fields. And we used to look at those, you know. And then um, she'd say, when it was going to storm, the leaves would turn inside out. She meant the the light part would turn up and it did storm. Mm -hmm. You know, it did storm. And then, you know, when the moon was like this, like like this, like, like a bowl, she'd say, I need a little oil, see, it'll rain soon. She was saying it was gathering water and it was going to rain. The moon was gathering water. And, and you know, she used to tell us it'll rain pretty soon because it's gathering water. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if y'all ever seen it. Well, in our area, it's hardly unusual. But uh, what after a hard rain, we'd see a fish on the ground. <laughs> and she used to say, pulled it from a creek. And she said there was wind that was coming, and it pulled that fish, and it moved, it came up. Mm -hmm. And she said, it's going to be a, 
it's going to be dry. And it would be. <coughs> and these little things that she told us, we watch for. I still follow them now. I still follow them now. And I don't know, did I tell you about the tornado story? Okay, the tornado story. She and she told me in Creek in Muscogee language. But when I was growing up, we 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 would be afraid of high winds, and she said, Don't be afraid of it. And she said, Don't ever run from it. We didn't run from it. She said, just turn on a light or the oil lamp, whatever. And she said, because this man was going to go across the field, and he said there was a storm coming. But back then, they didn't do nothing but walk. But he was in the open field. And he said that black cloud was just a coming. And he said, uh, he thought, well, if I get to this house that's ways down, I'll turn off there until the storm passes. Well, he kept going, and it, got, it came up on him. Came up on him. And uh, he didn't know what to do. And somebody said, uh, uh, he said, lay down, we'll jump over you. And he said, when he looked up, it was a man and a woman. The woman had a ribbon skirt on, mm -hmm. and the man had a ribbon shirt on, and they were holding hands, dancing, going around in a circle. It was that woman's skirt that was making the wind. Mm -hmm. So my grandma said, after that, that man said, they're Indians. They won't hurt. They won't hurt him. So we never ran from it. So we never ran from a storm. We never run from a storm. Uh, even a tornado, we didn't. We just stayed where we was at and just stayed in the house and it, it would pass over us. And, uh, and that was habit. So our kids know that, so they never run. But uh, uh, we used, like, some people say put an axe out there or put turtles out there. Well, one day, and this is how my house is. I told y'all my house is Muscogee. Well, um, we were, me and my husband both worked in Eufaula, and we're like 17 miles from where we live out in our little town. And it was storming, and one of the guys that worked there, he said, Becky, there's a tornado coming straight through, straight toward him. Well, our little girl was home. She was like, six or seven and she got home about an hour and a half before we did and I thought and he called and he called the teacher and he said can you go pick up my little girl because this storm he said yeah I'll, I'll go down there and pick her up he said I, I'm going right now so when he tried to pick her up she said no I'm not going I'll stay here I'm going to stay right here and he said you need to go with me because it's storming she said that's okay I'm going to stay right here. So he called back my husband and he said, she will not move. She will not go with me. <laughs> and he said, well, that's okay. Well, when my husband, me and my husband got home, she said, daddy, will you go help me pick up my turtles? See, she had practiced the Muscogee way. She had practiced it. What she learned, and she was just little. And usually her sisters were there, but they chickened out and stayed in town and they made her go home by herself. So, so see, she went on home, but she wasn't afraid of that storm because of what our ways are. So she had laid her turtle shells out. And when we got home, and it didn't storm, by the way, it went over. And she, when we got home, it hit us. <laughs> when we got home, she was there and she goes, Daddy, I got my uh, deals out there. We need to go pick them. Mm -hmm. So see, our practice carried on to her, which I didn't think it would, but it did. It's just seeing. So our home is full of that. So see how you can learn language the same way. Just listening and going over it. And I'm trying to explain it to her. <laughs> um, so Yikji is strong. Hoburki is fire. Now that's wildfire. Fire in general is torta. But when it's a wildfire, like my cousin's having in Spokane, it's called Hoburki. Hoburki. Okay. Here we go. We're going into sounds. Do you live here? 
Remember now, yun, ya, and ma. Remember we went over that before? Ya, ma is that, ya is this. Yun lady chidua. But when you got the N on there, yun, it's saying, uh, here, live. Oh, no. It's, yun is like, um, how can I explain that? Yun lady chidua. Uh, do you live here? Like here, here, like here. You see what I'm saying? Uh, do you live here? Yan. Lady Chidua. Yan is like, um, well, let me see if I can explain it. This here. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Right here. Right. Yeah. This right here. Yeah, with the N on it. Yeah is right here, okay? <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> How many years have you lived here? Sulobi is years. Najuman, how many? Legit Chidua. Legit lived here. Okay. Solo be na joan lady chidua. How many years have you lived here? Do you get snow? Oh, did you get snow? Jin hiduranga. Jin is like third person. Second, I mean second person, excuse me, second person, and it's saying, did it? Jin hiduranga. Jin hiduranga. Who is your grandma? Istemat Chibosidua. Istemat. Istemat means who is. Chibosi is grandma dua. Is. Istemat Chibosidua. Who is your grandma? Same thing. Istemat Chiboja dua. Remember, that's personal pronoun. Chi. Second person. I'm talking to Desiree. Stead Chibushi Dua. See, who's your grandmother? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what is your dog's name? Nagit Ifa Hojifka Dua. Okay. It says, What is your dog's name? But in Muskogee, all it's saying is, What is the dog's name? Because situation environment says, it's your dog if it's there, right? Mm -hmm. And that can be totally true because we got two dogs that does not belong to us at my house. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they visit. I mean, they live about half a mile, maybe a mile down the road. They go back and forth. They'll come to our house and stay two days. Then they'll go home, mm -hmm. stay there two days. Then they'll come back. <laughs> and I'm like, so my so my daughter, she said, these kids love these dogs. Well, the owner come up there, which we know them. We know them. Everybody knows everybody in him. <laughs> they came up there and they said, oh, you know, our dogs are up here. We don't, you know. And I said, you know, they told them they're fine as long as they don't bite the kids. And they said, oh, no, they're kids, kids, <laughs> kids, dogs. So they go back and forth. They were there last night, but they weren't there this morning, so they made a hike back to their house. They'll be there this evening. <laughs> so, and they go back and forth. They call them reservation dogs. Reservation <laughs> dogs, I guess. They share, you know. And and we're kind of we're kind of like that. You know, families, they used to go here for about three days and then they go back home. Mm -hmm. And then that family would come over for about three days and go back home. So one is and and one is a uh, uh, tippy, and one is raccoon. His name is Coon. <laughs> they call him Coon. So my kids just love him to death. So we bought them dog food now. So <laughs> when they come to our house, they eat just like a Muskogee family. They eat. Then when they go home, stay two days. They eat over there. And uh, and uh, um, this girl that graduated with my daughter. That's her dogs. And she said, uh, 
Well, we got two families that love these dogs. And so they just go back and forth. They were there last night. And they were gone this morning. So I know they went home. I don't know if they'll be back this evening. But anyway, she said, no wonder he's getting so fat. He's getting two meals, you know, three meals every time he comes in. But that's how we were, you know. <laughs> that's how we are. And it's a lot of... Uh, and, you know, uh, my grandma used to tell me, don't you ever mistreat a dog. She used to say, don't you ever mistreat a dog. Because our saying is that, uh, yeah, feed them and they will come. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I don't know the biblical story you have to cross over. We cross over. And apparently we go across a bridge the way my grandma. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was just a parable. Mm -hmm. And she said, if you mistreat a dog, they won't let you cross that bridge. Mm -hmm. So she used to tell us, don't ever. And she treated her dogs real well. And uh, she told us, never mistreat a dog. So we, we never did due to that fact, you know. And she used to say... Uh, and she had two dogs and that when she did her laundry, you know, she did her laundry in pots. Well, when she, before she poured it out, she'd pour it in a tub and she'd take a broom and, and wipe, uh, wash them down with that broom and that water. And that's what they like. They like that. Mm -hmm. They would run over there every time she poured that water into that tub. Mm -hmm. They'd go over there and she'd take that broom and just sweep them with the water. <laughs> and then they'd run into the pond. They knew what to do to rinse off. <laughs> so they got baths during the time my grandmother, during the summer, you know, she washed clothes. Yeah, yeah. wash clothes. <laughs> okay. Which direction do you live? Is the man, is the mafacha, legi chidoa? A sofi dog woman, someone who loved the dog, no one knew where it came from. Huh? You know, uh, that's one thing that we never did, you know. She said there's a dog woman. And uh, some people love dogs. I, they're not my favorite, but my grandkids, you know, they, they like them. And you do anything for your grandkids. So, mm -hmm. you know, and during that one day, one year, we had a dog. And he was a big dog. <laughs> but he was my grandkids' protector. He got them through a lot of things. They went through a rough time and he got them through. Well, our weather got down to 17 below. And those kids, <laughs> can he come, Grandma, if we made him, can he come in? Can he come in? And I mean, I will play that through my whole head, <laughs> through the whole day. Well, during that night, they said, it's going to be 17 below. And I thought, he'll freeze. And if he freezes, my grandkids will be devastated. So I was kind of throwing it back and forth like a basketball or a tennis ball going back and forth. And then I sat there and I called my grandkids and I said, bring him in. <laughs> and boy, they took him and they put him in a bathtub and they bathed him with him. And they did too. They bathed with him. <laughs> they got they got all they got all wet. My bathroom did too. And they bathed him up and they said, now nah, he's clean. You know. And then my husband walks in and he looks at the dog and he says, what are you doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> and my grandkids, they had him in their room, you know, and that's that's where he was. He stayed in there. And it was, and you know, uh, he laid right by the stove. He just laid right there by the stove, by the heater. Because they have electric heater in their house, in their room, you know. And they turned it on for some reason, which they didn't need it. They had it on because of him. I guess I would say now I'm figuring it out because he's wet because he was wet and they he just lay there and just calm as can be and I thought you know there's very <laughs> few people that live but there you go <laughs> okay right here is the mafachan lege chidoa what the which direction do you live wahala is south honeta is north Hazaklatka is west. Ha 
Sosa is east. I live Wahala. I live Wahala Vacha. South. Okay. So you're learning directions here now. Wahala is south. Hornitha is north. Hasaklaka is west. Hasosa is east. Hasaklaka. You live Hasaklaka because she lives toward OKC. From here, Mogi is Hasaklaka. Hasosa is east. Wahala is south. Hornitha. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Wahala <laughs> Hasosa. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. Wahala. Yeah. And now listen to that. I love these words and I don't know why. It's just the sound of them. Wahala. Everybody says south. I live south of town. I live, I'm going to south. I live south. Listen to that word. Wahala. Wahala. I like that word. Yeah. And then there's north. They say, I live north of town, I'm going north, <coughs> but it's Hornitha. <clears throat> I think those are pretty words. <laughs> Wahala and Hornitha. And then you got west, Hasaklatka. That's descriptive. Ha is uh, short for Hasi. Hasaklatka, and Latka means it falls. It falls down. Uh huh. Sun falls down. Hasaklatka. Hasosa is east. Hasosa is descriptive. Hasosa means it's saying same thing, short and osha. Oshida means to come out. Oshida. But hasosa means it comes out. So it's east. But the wahala and the honitha, those are real actual. And I wonder why. I, I often wonder why they got the real names, Wahala and Hunitha, and West and East. That's a question I got to say. Because to me, that's something that would be, we need to know. Well, you say everything had a meaning. It had a meaning to it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Wahala Hazaralatka. There you go. There you go. Wahala Hazaralatka. Uh, I like uh, that's some of the questions that need to be answered a lot of times is like why did they get why did West and East get like descriptive words but look at South Wahala Wahala that's an old word but you know it makes you wonder why did we just were was South something to us and North was something to us or it could have been the weather, warm and hot, mm -hmm. warm and, you know, changing seasons. Okay, somebody said some of our language came from different groups like Natchez, maybe. Waha, Wahula sounds like Hawaiian. It does, doesn't it? It does. Wahala. I was thinking it sounded like, um, what is the better? Where they go? I think it was in. Um, uh, go to Yaha, uh, Heaven, the name for heaven. Halloween, well, for, for the Lofa. Well, for the Vikings, I thought they wanted to go to like Yahala, something like that. Really? Mm -hmm. That's why I was thinking about that. I heard it. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Yeah. Okay, there you go. And that was, um, what was it, the Vikings or somewhere along It's Valhalla. Valhalla. See? Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I said, there's some thought that some native groups came from lost Haitians. I have some Southeast Asian in my DNA. You know what? That that DNA thing. <laughs> I I got 80 more to do. <laughs> and they're still coming. Uh, it could be. You never know. Because I don't think any of us are pure. You know what I'm saying? Like pure Muscogee. Because I got Seminole with me. Choctaw. I got Choctaw and Seminole. I'm not full black. There's Choctaw, Seminole in me, besides Muscogee. Me too. And my father was Muscogee, but my mother had a little bit of Choctaw and a little, you know, uh, Muscogee. 
if my grandma could speak for, see, uh, that's just, uh, that's just, I don't think we're pure, any of us. Now, they might, my husband is, he's full force. And that's just uh, amazing to me that there is full force, you know. But like me, and I told him I'm a Heinz 57, you know, because I said I got Choctaw, Seminole, and Muskogee in me. He goes, dang, you put together, <laughs> you know, and, and, but, you know, my, um, yeah, I took the ancestry DNA test in about 50 years when it went completely untested. Hmm. So, also DNA mastery people living in Muskogee and Tricky Reservation as well as elsewhere. Well, one of my DNA tests showed I was kid to a man, a boy, mm -hmm. and we woke her a whole bill. But on my grandmother's side, the women's side, mm -hmm. don't know the man, <laughs> never met him, don't know who he is. He's got the same DNA as I do. Mm -hmm. Now that's strange, you know. Uh, it says Muskogee was a group of different tribes which were shoved together out of necessity of being put under pressure from France to the West and England, maybe why. You know, I don't think any of us are pure, but <laughs> I don't think there's any of us pure. I don't think so. Like my husband now, he says he's full force, mm -hmm. but he's light conflicted. I mean, my one of my daughters seen him with my sh his shirt off and said, Oh, we have white. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Mom, do we got white in me? And and so, you know, makes you wonder. Because his dad was blonde headed. Mm -hmm. And they called him Kalan. That's why they called him Kalan, because he was blonde headed. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he's pure or not. See, I had kids Turkey Reservation too. See, mm -hmm. it, it's just whatever. I think we're a mixture, you know, mixture of all these tribes. But one thing is we're all native. Mm -hmm. We're all native. You know, we're all native. That's the thing. Okay. Speaking phrases. Look here. This is the one that we had. Uh, it says, how's it going? You know, kids nowadays, they say, how's it going? They don't say, what are you doing? Or how are you? They say, how's it going? It's still going. I forgot. You wandering around, okay? See, we can do that. This new, new language they got out, we can just about, uh, we can compete with it. <laughs> What's for dinner? That's what I hear all the time. Noggin, y'all got What in the evening going to eat? That's exactly what he's saying. What in the evening going to eat? Noggin, y'all got What's happening this week? This week, what is going on? Do you have plans for today? Noggin, do a mojenita. Or you can turn that around and say, Either way, it's understood and it's right. Are you busy or are you free to chat? To talk, you have time. These are all, you know, just uh, things that you can, we can translate. There are certain things we can't, but there's things we can. Where are my keys? This is everyday stuff, guys. This mm -hmm. is everyday stuff. This is what you talk about every day. Where are my keys? How about my keys? We can't say, where are my keys? We can say, how about the keys? So we each get up. So we each get up. Uh -huh. So we each get his key. What are you up to this weekend? Mm -hmm. We're not saying what are you doing, but that's how they speak nowadays. What are you up to this weekend? The Dago this bull got the one on top. The Dago means week. This bull got when it ends. Because we don't have a word for weekend. But we have says the end of the week. This bull got the one on top. What are you going to do? <laughs> Look here. This was a good one. Are you keen to having lunch Saturday? <laughs> Keen, are you keen? <laughs> to me, that's saying, do you want to have lunch Saturday, or do you want to have, you know, do you want to have lunch Saturday? So you would say, 
এদের হোম কই দাও জিয়া যা দাজাক চোশে এদের হোম বি দা জিয়া যা দাজাক চোশে স্যাটারডে এদের হোম বি দা মিন্স টু ইট টুগেদার জিয়া যা ডু ইউ ওয়ান্ট উই ডোন্ট হ্যাভ কিন বিকজ কিন ইজ লাইক সেইং ডু ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু ইউ নো সো দিস ইজ হোয়ার উই ক্যান ও just say it just the way it's being said you're joking e o g i t h s o e o k c h a o e o g i t e o g i t h a n t a i e o g i t s k a e o g i t s k a e o g i t s k a that's when you say and they'll say they'll say something to you sometimes and they'll say e o g i s i'm just saying it. they're saying i'm joking mm-hmm. or they say i want to spank you or something and they say e o guess i'm just i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> had you got much going on these days these days look at that have you got have how you how have you got much going on these days not me jida solgin odich kidowa things to do a lot you have for you in same thing same thing it's saying the same thing how's your work day going mojanita jima dutkira hisa today you work good should we grab a bite to eat not timba bit to wahania Knock is something. Tin babit, eat somewhere. Tua hanya, should we? Should we grab something to eat? And it's the same thing. It's just that we're doing it in a different, um, it's in Muscogee. So why um, do we need English? <laughs> why do we need English? <laughs> why do we need really? Why do we need English? That's my point here. Why do we need English? Look at all this we could do with the language. Why do we need English? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, being a speaker all my life, I probably said this one time or another. I probably said it too many times one time or another. You know, where are my keys is one of them. <laughs> so we each could have. So we each could have. That's probably two, three days a week. So we should up. In fact, I said that yesterday. So did everybody have a good holiday? <laughs> everybody had a good holiday. Labor Day, we don't have a word. We don't have a word for Labor Day. Work day. Work day. I don't get in it. Work day. And I did. I did my house that I didn't have to, you know, I haven't had time to do. I worked on my house. We stayed at home. Um. And Saturday, we were sitting there, and everybody was gone. Of course, all my grandkids and their mother went somewhere. And so we was just two of us at home. And he said, let's go take a ride. So we went just going down different roads. And I said, gosh, I haven't been down this way in forever. <laughs> Barbecue steak, a rare treat. That is good. That yeah. would be good. I can take that, too. <laughs> that would be nice right there. Uh, and... Uh, You know, my husband being an OU fan, Saturday, that's what we did. Saturday, we come up here. To, he wanted to watch the ball game with his brother. Boy, he grilled some hamburgers up, and I never tasted hamburgers like that. They were so good. Caught up on sleep. So did I. So did I. I caught up on some sleep, and I got to uh, uh, fix up my closet, my towel closet. You didn't know whether it was a towel closet, a junk closet, or a whatever. You couldn't tell. Boy, I got it straightened up. I got, actually got one empty shelf in there. <laughs> and I thought, how did that happen? I got it and wiped down my kitchen, <laughs> put things in order. I didn't know how much out of, I didn't know how out of order we were until we <laughs> start, cleaning. start cleaning and trying to put stuff up, you know. <laughs> And I shampooed my carpets, I vacuumed them, 
I did it all this past weekend. I said, you know what? It was Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions so far on any of these things? Remember now, Sawichka's key. You've got keys every day. Use it, Sawichka. House key, uh, office key, uh, uh, your car keys. Everything's got a key. Your lawnmower's got a key. Storage key. Storage key. Everywhere. You got keys everywhere. You know, so use it. So each got. And somebody else will learn it if you use it. They may not know what Sawichka is, but if you show it, show your keys, Sawichka. Mm -hmm. This is my Sawichka, and I got it on this one because I lose them. That's how, and <laughs> with all this on there, I still say Sawichka down. It's around your neck. Yeah, around my neck, like my glasses. <laughs> you know, Sawichka, it's, um, you, you use them every day, so, you know, use it. And people, another person will learn so we each got. I say once you learn something, whoever's around you is going to know because you're going to say them. So say them. Uh -huh. yeah. That's just like home bus. It's a universal word around here. <laughs> when somebody says home bus, they know. I don't care what nationality. They know what home bus is, <laughs> especially in our little town. <laughs> they know what it is. They know, they'll say, oh, she got something to eat, you know. <laughs> I'll say, home bus, and they know. It's a universal word in my little town. Everybody knows what it is. <laughs> and that's because they've heard it over and over and over. And you used it and used it, okay? Um, it's, it's just using it, using it. That's what we're trying to do in our immersion class today. We're telling them to use it. How many times do you say thank you in a day? My dog. Mm -hmm. You know. It, it's just use it. Whether they understand it or not, they'll get it. If you got a regular store that you go to, well, I don't know how it is in big towns, but here I, in my little town, uh, in little surrounding areas, they kind of get to know you after a while. They kind of know your face. And if you say my dog, they ain't going to think nothing of it. They know what you're talking about. Because you know what they're, you know, it's just something. It's still going off the gun. How's it going? You know, what's for dinner? That's every day just about, I don't know, what we're going to eat or what's for dinner. Now I get home behind you. You can even take this out and say, now I get home behind you. What are we going to eat? But I just put evening in there. You just take it out and just say, what are we going to eat? <laughs> That's what I told my husband the other day. I said, what are we going to eat? <laughs> he said, I don't know. You know, and we, I think we, we ate breakfast out. And because I stay in the kitchen all the time. And that's kind of what I did this past weekend, Labor Day. I kind of stayed in the kitchen. I made fried raisin pies. My husband was wanting fried pies. He said, I want fried pies. And so I thought, well, tomorrow, yesterday, you know, I had time because I got the house done. Mm -hmm. I had I told him I was not going to do a thing. And I did cook for him. And he said, you know, I want fried pies. He's been talking about it. So yesterday I made him fried raisin pies. Mm -hmm. And I had my grandkids. I got this presser that you stick your dough in and you press it down. Well, I could have had them fried raisin pies done probably in 45 minutes to an hour. And it took me every bit two to three hours because they were the one pressing them, you know. <laughs> Press, and they were taking turns. He done four. I just got to do three. He done three. I just got to do four. We went bickering over that, you know. So he, you know, they helped me make the fried pies. But that's how we bond. That's how I get to spend time with my grandkids. Because I'm at work, they're at school, you know. <laughs> but that's how we get together. Now I got that 13 year old. She said, Y'all go ahead. I'm, I'm on the phone. <laughs> See, but the two little ones, that's how, and she was that way at one time. Mm -hmm. So these two kids, they they were, and then they had to put the egg white on. <laughs> and I'm like, um, I'll do that. You know, I'll do that, but you can press it. And so, you know, that's how I get. Get to spend time with my grandkids. A lot of it's in the kitchen because I'm in the kitchen most of the time. You know, so any questions on this? What we went over. Now, 
I want to ask y'all this. What do y'all want to study next? Because we've done infinitive verbs. We've done verbs. We've done putting, breaking letters down. We, I mean, breaking words down into sounds. We've did just about everything. Here's one. Got a suggestion. There you go. See, you spent three days. Jane says she spent three days with her granddaughter's bacon. Mm -hmm. And see, that is that family time. You know, uh, we kind of run. Somebody said Boomer Sugar. <laughs> That'd be my husband's uh, my husband's fan right there. Yeah, Boomer Sooner, yeah. <laughs> He's my whole house is sooner. We got a big old OU sign on my top of my roof that lights up during games <laughs> and it's got red lights on it going around in circles. Oh and he <laughs> he turns that on every time they play. <laughs> So y'all got any, okay, what next do y'all want to learn? Because I got all kinds of things on here. I mean, I've been busy. <laughs> I've been putting all kinds of things on here. But, you know, if you tell me what you want to learn, I can put it on there. Is there something that you want? Is there translations you want? Because I got all, I got a folder full. Of Desiree can. <laughs> Desiree can. <laughs> yeah. Desiree can uh, tell you about that. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, maybe a story we can translate together. I can do that. I'm learn. I'm new to language. I wanted to listen to how to get the whole language together. Okay. Uh, the best place to learn, especially for this one, is sounds. Whatever you want to throw at us. <laughs> uh, like I got, uh, I got some stories. I got a lot of stories. I got a lot of stories. I can put some stories on here. You know, it it, it future tense phrases. All right, future tense because we are doing. Verb tenses. We'll go into future tense and that even be part of that story. Because they'll start out with Hufunangi. Hufunangi means long time ago. <laughs> you know, haunted. Oh, Halloween. Halloween. Okay. I can do that too. Yeah. I, I'm good at that. Uh, in fact, my grandkids, they'll, uh, they'll say, Grandma, tell stories. You can't sleep. <laughs> I quit because they wouldn't go to sleep. I quit telling stories because of that. And so <laughs> things like this, you know, um, I need to do future tenses and we're studying future tenses too. So I'm going to go into that and we'll do stories. And, you know, sometimes this language gets monotonous. It can get really boring. So I'll go into stories because I've got a lot of stories, <laughs> you know, and then we'll go into future tenses, past, present, the creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I'm just going to say I'm a scaredy cat. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something about our tribe. We have shapeshifters. We have things that's totally unbelievable. That would be totally unbelievable to the European world. Well, it's, it's who we are. It's who we are. You know, about spirits and... Um, um, Different things that like the turtle shells for the storms. Yeah, yeah the turtle shell for the storm. Hear about that when I heard about the the egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that until 2015, 2016. Well, when you when you've been raised by uh, a totally Muscogee family, you learn things like this, and even the stories, like the scare stories, they're not they're true. My the stories I know is true. Always told me not to be afraid. Yeah. So just don't be afraid. Yeah. You see something, don't be afraid. <laughs> I was like, you see something, how can you not be afraid? <laughs> it says, I believe in all of it, having experienced some of my things of my own. See, yeah, you experienced, that's me. I've experienced it. And it's, uh, I've seen some of it. Totally unbelievable. Because for a while, like when you see something that's different, you're like, did I see that? Mm -hmm. Is it, did I really see that? Mm -hmm. You know, your mind, I mean, you question yourself. Did I see it? Did I really see that? You know, or so like, what? Yeah, or you're standing with somebody and like, did you see that? Yeah. 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 Did you see that? And you're like, did you see that? <laughs> you know, uh, and that's what's like I was telling you a story about the girl and me and her saw that white out. 
And you know, not long after she passed, mm -hmm. she got diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer. Mm -hmm. And you know, things like that, you know. And uh, one day I was invited to a Halloween party. And of course, me and my husband, we're like kids. We dressed up too. Mm -hmm. My grandkids did too. We all, we make it a family thing. So we went and they said, oh, Becky needs to tell stories, you know. So here I had all these kids gathered around me. And I started off talking real low, and I went, Boo! <laughs> and they was like, Boo! and I'm like, because <laughs> they were so intense of listening, you know. But yeah, we'll do that. Halloween's coming up. I'll tell you some. I'll tell you some things, you know. Uh, Halloween, and I'll even give you words for Halloween. I got Halloween words. Halloween words. I got Halloween words. So I'll go through those too. I got some little words. So anyway, okay, we got about four minutes, but we need to head back to that immersion class. So I'm going to let y'all go and I'll see y'all uh, Wednesday. All right, but oh, everybody, and uh, we're going to get those on. Uh, uh, we'll get them on here. Mado. Mado. Ah. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, that was fun. Oh, I know. She hit the gas thing. Oh, all right. Stop chat. And for all, or and this is for all.